Today we're going to learn about algebra proofs. How many tickles does it take to make a squid laugh? 10 tickles. On our agenda, we're going to learn about algebraic proofs and we'll learn some new properties. Here we have an opener. We're going to solve this for x. So we see that we have the 3. This is going to be a distributive property. And I get 6x minus 15 equals 2x minus 25. I have x's on both sides, so I'm going to subtract those. I get 4x minus 15 equals 25. I want to solve for x, so I want to undo the minus 15, so I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And I get 4x equals 40. We're almost there. We'll divide both sides by 4, and we'll get x equals 10. So we already know how to solve this algebraically. You already know the steps, but you haven't really been asked to write the reasons that you can do each of those. And so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to make a t-chart and we're going to be doing algebra proofs. So here's the same problem. We just did it. We know that the answer is x equals 2. You can see we have our statements and reasons table. And our first statement is always the given statement. Our last statement will always be the proof statement, so I know that I have to finish with x equals 10. And the last reason is never the word proof, so don't put the word proof there. Um, kids might get it mixed up with because my first reason is the reason given. I have to start with something, so that is given information, so my first reason is given. Now, because we just did the problem, we're familiar with it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show my first step, which would be the distributing. So I get 6x minus 15 equals 2x plus 25. And when we go through the reasons, it's usually, what did I do to step one to get step two? I did the distributive property. I'm spelling it wrong. <laughs> Property. Now I want to subtract the 2x from both sides. So when I do that, I'm going to get 4x minus 15 equals 25. Notice I'm not really showing it. So if this was already done, I would have to see what did the person do from step two to get to step three. They are doing the subtraction property. I don't mind if you abbreviate it subtract property, but you can't go all the way to SUB and we'll see why in a little bit. So I'm still trying to get to the X, so I'm gonna add 15 over. So I get 4X equals 40. And the thing that I just did was addition. So this is the addition property. And I can see this last step. What did I do to step four to get to step five? I divided by four. So this would be the division property. So again, you already know all those steps, you just haven't written the reasons out, and that's what we're going to be doing with algebraic proofs. So what are some properties that you know that you can use when you're doing an algebra problem? Well, I will accept either combining like terms or simplifying. Um, we know that we have the addition property, subtraction, multiplication, division, distributive, something like that, and then substitution. That is something where you are plugging in for something else. Let's try this algebra proof. So it's a little bit longer. <clears throat> we already have our answer, and that's kind of the cool thing. You're given the, the beginning problem, you're given the answer, you just need to fill all the steps in in the middle in logical order. So I, we rewrote our given statement, and my reason is given. I do see the parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply that. And notice that I am only changing one thing at a time. So negative 4x plus 8 plus 16. The reason is the distributive property. Now I'm going to combine like terms, and it's okay if you do it on both sides. So I'm going to have 8x when I combine my x's plus 8 and then negative 4x plus 24. The reason would be combining like terms, or you could say the word simplify. So now I see the negative 4x, so I'm gonna add 4x over. That's gonna give me 12x plus eight equals 24. Because I added the 4x, that's addition property. I'm going to subtract the 8, 
So I get 12x equals 16. And that is subtraction. I'm going to divide by 16, or sorry, divide by 12. So I get 16 twelfths division property. And it is a improper fraction. It's not simplified. So I am, I do want to finish with the exact ending statement. So I want to say x equals 4 thirds, and that would be simplifying. Some new properties we're going to look at. You should get these in your notes. Reflexive, symmetry, and transitive. The reflexive property says that it equals itself. This one almost seems kind of silly. If I say segment LM equals segment LM, we, yes, of course it does. Um, but we will be using this along the way, not necessarily in algebraic proofs, but more in geometric proofs. The symmetric property is the mirror image. You change the order. X equals five is the same thing as saying five equals X. So whenever you change the order, you're going to call that symmetric symmetry property. And the transitive property uses three parts. So here I have angle A, B, and C. Um, this says if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A must be equal to C. So we've kind of got, um, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, we've got this repeated middle part where they both equal B. So if they both equal B, then I can just set each of them equal to each other. We are going to be using this um, quite often, and there are three parts involved. As long as that middle piece is the same, you can pull it out and then make the conclusion that A equals C. So when you're doing algebraic proofs, it's important you show each step just one piece at a time, give a reason for each step, and then the reasons can come from definitions, theorems, postulates, and properties. Good job.